Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor in Paradise, a guy's review. After two long years without uh, Bachelor in Paradise, we are back, baby, and we're ready to cover it. It's going to be a lot of remembering who's who. We've got plenty of contestants, some we know, some we don't. Some we're like, who's that person? You know, I'm still trying to figure out Kendall and Heather are different people. You know, we don't know who they are. Uh, I'm not going to share any of their graphics. I'm not going to do it, folks. So do yourself a favor. Get out your Facebook or your Instagrams and just start Googling these people because we're going to get into it. Vaxxed, waxed, and full of cracks. Butt cracks, that is. Looking at you, Kenny. All right, we're going to get into this. I take notes. I read them back to you guys. No edits, no jump cuts, just me, you, and the set list. Like this video, subscribe, and we're going to have a ton of extra content. Do me a favor. I'll be making a video this week playing your voicemails. Leave a voicemail, 401-213-9828. Tell me anything you want about Bachelor in Paradise. What did you think of David Spade? How did you like the pairings? Who needs to go? Let me know. Leave a comment. Leave a voicemail, and we'll get right into that. All right, here we go, folks. We open with the hotties that self-eliminated, Brendan and Serena. Too good for the leads. Maybe they can try it on a sandy beach in Mexico. Can't commit? We'll see you under a palapa. We'll make you commit or else you're going home. Queen Victoria shows up. Now, listen, it's going to be a lot of names. There's going to be a lot of people. This is the early, the first few weeks. It's just me juggling different people here. It's very difficult. So we're going to try to figure this out. Queen Victoria is dead from her ashes. Rose, a blonde goddess. My chakra is nauseous watching this. Anyone else have like a weird feeling in their own chakra? It's like, I understand you're into crystals. I'm going to need you to solidify your way out of here. Give her a rock if she'll leave. Neil Lane's like, would you accept this diamond to get off the beach? Ma Ma Mari is looking to meet Kenny, she says. I'm all about that. That would be a nice pairing, just beautiful people. If you, I like people with nice tans, and Mari and Kenny both have golden skin. Kenny shows up in the buff. Clearly, he paid extra to check his baggage. Nothing to carry on there. Credit to his gym regiment. That is a good-looking man. Uh, uh, Kenny is my goal body, Just even with the tattoos. Give me the tattoos if it means my abs look like that. Kelsey shows up, champagne girl. Everyone's just kind of got their brand. You got a guy who worked at a grocery store. He's grocery store to go. Kelsey, you know, throws a little champagne in her face. Weren't those the good old times when Kelsey got hit in the face with some bubbly? We didn't even know what a coronavirus was back in the day. Oh, to be young again in 2019. So she shows up. I'm loving her. By the way, I'm thinking Kelsey. I'm like, hey, Kelsey and David Spade, he likes younger blondes. Maybe she likes older comics. Who knows? They might have something there. Cat boy, summer, meow. Connor comes to the beach ready to strum on his G-string, or maybe somebody else's. We'll have to see how it goes there. David Spade, folks were skeptical, but look, he's the perfect guy for the role. I'm going to make a video later on today grading David Spade's comedy from this premiere. Some people didn't like it. I think most people understood David Spade as a host knocked it out of the park. He's perfect for it, guys. He's perfect. I'll get into that later. So hit the subscribe button and watch this video. By the way, the last time I did Bachelor in Paradise recaps, I had 1,000 subscribers. Later this week, we will hit 40,000 subscribers. I'm going to do a four-hour, 40,000 subscriber live stream special whenever we hit that. Uh, we'll get into all that. All right. Abigail shows up. She's starstruck. Wasn't that fun? She goes, I'm not some fragile thing that can only talk about her hearing loss. All right, breaking news, folks. Abigail's ready for hot girl summer. You know, she she's mentioned this before. She's like, I'm just pigeonholed as this nice prude. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know why they think of that. Maybe because she's quiet, soft-spoken, whatever the case may be. And she's like, uh-uh, girl can get it. Well, we'll see about that. Time is of the essence. Grocery store Joe and Ivan, they both want to meet Serena P. All right, our first lover's quarrel. Uh, gorgeous Brendan shows up. Ladies go wild for Big B. He's got the full package, right? I've liked Brendan from the get-go. Gorgeous man. Some, you know, some, some of you guys, some of you guys go like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. Brendan's not for me. And I'm like, ear, ear, are you kidding me? This guy is just an Adonis. He's built from the gods. You know, when they say, like, God must have spent a little bit more time on you, God cleared his schedule to make Brendan, and I won't apologize for that. I mean, really. He just, it's like almost like Brendan got stuck in the factory, and God's like, I guess I'll work extra hard on you. And that's why he's, um, and speaking of getting hard on for people, all right, 
It's a family show, folks. Move it along. Um, uh, Natasha arrives. Listen, Natasha is also someone who's on my short list for Bachelorettes. I just really like her. I think, I think she is vastly underrated in the franchise. I think she's great on her podcast. All that jazz. Big fan of Natasha. Tammy arrives and calls David Spade Dave Chappelle. Can you imagine if this was some sort of like reversal where some guy was like just miss, you know, remembered. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't get offended by it. She heard David. She know one comedian. Listen, David, Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest of all time. He's on the Mount Rushmore. David Spade, not on the Mount Rushmore of comedy, but he's in the Hall of Fame. David Spade is in the Hall of Fame of comedy. I mean, if you look at his IMDb, the guy's got a track record for success. He knows his character and he plays it well. All right, we got Kenny showing up naked. 40 never looked so good. Please. I mean, I just ate, you know, we sh to watch this on a Monday after eating recklessly all weekend, that's just not fair. That's not fair to the rest of us. Can we get a trigger warning for Kenny's abs? Golly. Also, I would pay an extra $5 if they removed the black box. Let's see what he's working with. Pop the hood. Let's see what's under the engine. Come on, I'll give you an oil change. All right, folks. How sweet is Connor? <laughs> introduces himself like he's at camp. He goes, I'm Connor from Katie Season. Connor, <laughs> hi there, I'm Connor from Katie Season. Anyone who didn't know who Connor was, it's like, do you not watch the show? The guy literally was just on the show weeks ago. Hi, I'm Connor from Katie Season. Grocery store Joe, I love Connor, right? Oh, they better not do Connor wrong. I am protecting him. Grocery store Joe already hates being there. <laughs> it goes, and he's in that Midwestern accent. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have come back. I don't know. I was just feeling like the grocery store produce was too much. And I thought, oh, and now I'm here and I got the feels, right? Which sucks. He fell in love there. You know what I mean? We have vicarious attachment to certain things. Plenty of us won't go back to certain countries because we broke up with someone we loved there. You know what I mean? I won't go back to certain parts of New York City. Do I still have feelings for the person? Not at all. Do I want to be seen on the Upper East Side? Not at all. <laughs> Just burn it down. I don't want to see it. You know what I mean? I want that neuro neuralizer that Men in Black has. Just to help me forget. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Victoria shows, she goes, I'm a goddess now. The queen is dead. Um, David Spade goes, I didn't get CC'd on that. That's why he's funny. Just simple quip. David Spade is like the Floyd Mayweather of comedy. He just will jab you. You'll give him something and he'll just jab you with it. That's actually a really good comparison if you break down David Spade. He's not going to show up and knock you down with some one-two punch. He's just going to kind of be the funny guy in the back of the bus. That's what we like about David Spade. We'll get into more of that comedy later. Mari tells Kenny she likes older guys. He's like, bingo. David Spade's like, what? He pull, comes up from a palapa. What? Would you say you like older guys? I'll be that guy for you. Uh, yeah, Kenny, I mean, look, tw she's 25. He's uh, 40. I mean, that's, yeah, it's an age difference. But yeah, what can you do? You know, age, when you get to a certain point, it's like, where are you emotionally and all that jazz? At least that's what Kenny tells the younger ladies. Hey, emotionally, we're the same. I'm a boy band manager. I've liked Kenny from the get-go. And you can go back to the footage to point that out. Tajwan knows Trey because she went on a date with his uncle. Fantastic. We find out Tajwan went on a date with Trey's uncle. Hey, keep it in the family. Why not? You know what I mean? She's like, I like the genetics, but if we could slightly tweak it up, maybe with a different mom. And she's like, there it is. Jack, and by the way, I need to know more about the uncle. How is it a you know, is it an actual uncle? Is it one of those like family friends you call an uncle? It feels like an uncle. Also, how are they all that intertwined? These bachelor people, they all know each other. But Tejuan said that Trey's uncle introduced her to Trey, I believe. So I don't know. We'll have to see how it all goes down. More to follow on that one. Jacked James shows up, perfectly gelled hair and jacked arms. Gotta love James. Doesn't he look good? Boy, I tell you what, wouldn't want to go to the gym with him. I would look like a twig, right? He looks amazing. Don't you love this? You got to love bro camaraderie. The bros immediately start complimenting each other on their summer bodies. There's nothing better to the, uh, you know, the soul, the love language, the love well, than showing up and your buddies start giving you that man massage. And you're like, bro, you've been doing traps? And like, yeah, I've been doing a little traps. I've been doing that TRX workout. Bro, I noticed the TRX workout. They're just like slapping asses. And then from the distance, the girls are like, what are they doing over there? And the guys are just like, tell me about that regiment. You're doing reverses you got to do the reverses everyone goes for the gains but it's all about the reverses what's that i don't know um i've been doing some trx what do you guys think 36 not too bad unless you put me up next to kenny all right we're all different so tajuan meets carl and is immediately annoyed by him you got to respect tajuan and, and i pray i'm pronouncing this right i'm trying my best you got to respect her intuition for scumbags 
Immediately she meets Carl and he pulls some weird move. Listen, I'm sure Carl's just a little bit uh, like anxious. So he does weird things, you know, like he's afraid to get his shoes dirty or whatever. I'm sure he just kind of like interjects weird things like, you know, but either way, not exactly a turn on for the ladies. She's like, no, thanks. Check, please. Spade. But by the way, I mean, 10 guys, 13 girls. So three of the girls aren't going to get chosen. They're going home, you know? So Carl, somebody's going to be kissing ass to get with Carl. And I hope he understands. It's just because he has the rose. That's the currency, my friends. Um, Spade introduces himself to the group, uh, does some stand-up comedy. You guys noticed he threw some bits in there. You know, I have no muscles. I'm a whatever. That's a great way to build empathy with an audience. He disarms himself. He's like, I get it. I'm a celebrity, but I'm not as strong like you guys. He does uh, self-deprecating is always a great way to break the ice. Everyone come laugh at me. You know what I mean? He explains the rules, fall in love or go home, kick rocks, no pressure, time to get into it. The women don't like the role reversal, and boy, do I love watching a good role reversal. Listen, these are hand-plucked women. These are some of the best women that, oh, they went through the casting notes. These are the best women that Bachelor producers could find, and now they've got a hit on these guys. And ladies... I know all ladies don't like being generalized. Stick with me. These are jokes, and I understand this. Yeah. You cut the crap. You cut the crap. I know that all ladies don't like being generalized. I understand the, the irony there. But there are some fun things to watch when the women have to be the aggressors. These women are used to bashing those fake eyelashes. Just glue them right on. Do the five-second eye contact, and a flock of guys will come and be like, I am the brave one. And then it's like, what's in your bank account? And then they just show them, and then they get a date, or whatever the case may be. Not women are all attracted to money. Some like funny. Some like funny and money. Some like money that's funny. Whatever the case may be, these women are not built to go after these guys. These guys are the sharks built to go after... Anyway, you guys get the point. I feel like I'm apologizing already. But anyway, I love watching the role reversals. It's like, toughen up, ladies. Get in there and find your man. And listen, it ain't easy approaching women, right? Men learn this. You know, every guy here has tried to you know, go approach a woman, then he gets nervous, and then all of a sudden some, like, better-looking guy like James or Brendan will walk in and swoop in and approach the lady. And you go, God, and then you next thing you know, you're having tacos with your buddy. They're making fun of you because you got cold feet. All right. We're cooking. Abigail gets first date card, asks Noah. She says she puts guys in their friend zone very easily. It's like, listen, you got, look, Noah's the one with the rose. He's in charge here. You got to give him some light at the end of the tunnel here. You know, you, you can say you move slow, this or that, but don't like immediately tell him you're going to friend zone him. Uh, then we cut to Connor. And again, there's going to be a lot of making out happening. Connor's canoodling with Marissa, which is a very kind of like fun moment. They say they both promised they wouldn't kiss anyone the first night, but then they kind of lock eyes, and they're just there, and I'm like, oh, boy, God, it's going to be getting it tonight, and they kiss. We're happy for them. Every time we talk about kissing, we'll give you the fangirl screaming. Then we have a montage of all the first kisses of paradise. Hard to know which one was first, right, because they kind of jump around editing-wise, but I'd like there to be a trophy for the first kiss. I feel like it should be automatic immunity. If you get the first kiss, like night one, Boom, immunity. I know I'm combining Survivor, but isn't that all this game is, is Survivor? This is Survivor, but they get fed a little bit more alcohol. Serena says Joe gives her the Fiesta flutters. He's moping around, but then Wells kind of slaps him back into reality, gives him a little motivation. Serena and Joe start hanging out. They mention their ages. She's 23. He's 35. He says, doesn't feel weird to me. And he's like, yeah, no, no, it's never weird for the older person. It's weird for the younger person who's like looking at their dad, you know. Serena, uh, guys, um, I think I think I think men should study these types of interactions, right? Uh, it's perfect. She gave him the longest stare ever. Then he went in for the kiss. She looked at him to the point of almost discomfort, and he's like, "Oh, this means she wants me to." She did what Victoria Larson said you should do—the five-second rule. She gave him the eyes. Then he went in for the kiss. That's how you do it. You know what I mean? They were good. They kissed. I gotta hit the thing. Joe has post-makeout energy. He's back, baby. Joe's back. He's moping around all day. Then he gets a couple of smooches on the old kiss. Then Midwestern Joe, he's like, all right, I'm back in. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. We're partying. <laughs> that kiss is his cocaine. He's like, give a kiss. Let's go at it. Spade goes to Wells for the gossip. Uh, <laughs> I love that. David Spade goes up to Wells like Wells is the product manager. He's like, what do we got? Wells is like, well, the most makeouts we've ever had. One person said they made out with the guy's uncle. <laughs> Spade's like, oh, we, we really party, don't we? He's like, we do a lot of partying. Can I get you a drink, sir? 
Um, like I said before, I don't want to steal anybody's job. I don't want to be the host. I don't want to be the bartender. All I'm saying is make me a bar back. Let me be a bar back. If Wells is busy once in a while, I'll give them a nice slap on the butt and get them out there until they're uh, chasing crabs, if you know what I mean. It's a metaphor. I don't know what it means. Side hustle. All right. Kelsey tells Aaron that she spent the previous day observing and wants to talk to more guys. How nice is that? <laughs> right? She's like, yeah, last, yesterday I just spent observing. It's like, oh yeah, observing. That's right. That's why I was single for so long, right? I spent all of high school just observing girls uh, date all my guy friends. They kissed underneath the bleachers. Kissing is the least that I was worried about. All right. Flick the bean. Demi arrives, and then that's where it ends. Demi arrives, and they they talk Demi up. They get Demi going. I don't know what these producers do. They give them some sort of like you know four loco and hope, right? And then they just get Demi all riled up. It's almost you ever seen a bull? You ever see the bull riding competition? They'll get these bulls in the cage. They'll start like smacking them and cattle prodding them and doing all these things. Then they open the door, and the bulls have a ride of their life. That's what they do to Demi. They're like, "You're a bad bitch. You're the queen. Yes, girl, get it. Get in there and show them what's up." And Demi's like, I am a bad bitch. I am a queen. I will show them what's up. And then she just shows up with that little, you know, necklace belt. What ladies in your fashion? That little necklace belt they wear. <laughs> That's they're like, oh, I, I don't want to look too prude in a bikini. I'll put a necklace belt on. Like they just ripped it off of some Italian guy in New York's neck, you know. <laughs> anyway, so she shows up. They're getting ready to party. And will she cause drama? Yes. Uh, Wells does say that she does cause the most drama. Um, We'll have to see what that means. Well, I've had people call in and say, well, they better not be queer baiting. The show better not use her bisexuality as some sort of novelty. For So we'll have to see how it all goes down. We don't really know. But uh, like I said before, leave a voicemail, 401-213-9828. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, this is the tip of the iceberg. As you guys know, I used to just do recap videos, then I'd be done for the week. We are all in since the beginning of this year. This is the news, baby. This is the program. So get with it. I am going to be giving you plenty of content. We've got Blake Horseman just posted on Instagram that he's feeling a little nervous watching Bachelor in Paradise because his ex Becca is going back on the show. So even, you know, he's starting to get triggered. He's already sweating, ready to go. I'm going to give the David Spade grade, kind of get into more of the specifics, the breakdown of his comedy and why it works so well. I love doing stuff like that. Like I love getting in the weeds of comedy and talking about uh, humor. Um, and let me know what else there is to talk about. I'm sure there'll be other breaking news. Katie Thurston and Blake Moines were live reacting to the show. This was Katie's first time as a bachelorette alumni where she gets to watch the show and it's not about her. And I have to tell you, that must be fantastic. It must have been so nerve wracking. I mean, imagine this. Katie's been watching the show back since Matt James season, right? So she hasn't gotten to watch a show in about a year where she wasn't somehow related to the show. So I'm, I'm sure she loves seeing her exes kiss people. And I know that, uh, you know, I mean, she's watching Connor make out, but she made out with Connor. Connor's kind of, you know, because Katie's still talked about a lot because a lot of these contestants were literally just dumped by her. So they're all on the show. And then we're going to have guys like Thomas and Aaron kind of alpha male each other. You know, drama is in store. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, call the number 401-213-9828. I'll be making a uh, voicemail video in reaction to your Bachelor in Paradise. Next week, Monday and Tuesday, I'll do a pre-episode live stream. I'm still working out the... Uh, sort of uh, logistics if I'm going to do an after episode live stream for both. I think I will. I think it's a little easier for me to keep it fresh in my brain if I do a Monday night and Tuesday night uh, live stream. So tons of content there. If you guys haven't already, you can go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal if you want to support me in other ways. Private membership community, ton of extra content, a lot of behind the scenes talk about what I do with my channel and all the behind the scenes of Bachelor. So that's where you can go check that out. And again, at Dean Neal's on Instagram, let me know what you guys think. And if you want to check this out, if you don't follow my Instagram and you only follow my YouTube, I made a Bachelor in Paradise intro for myself and you can go watch that on my Instagram. I literally filmed my own slow-mo intro. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye now.